Hello and welcome to the Bane Picks video for the Los Angeles Lakers at Dallas Mavericks. I'm your host, Matthew Amato for Limes.com, joined by my two resident NBA experts, Drew Norton and Jason Gilbo. Unfortunately for you all, the Lakers are once again in prime time. I apologize on the NBA's behalf for the NBA. Uh, we got to watch them take on Luka Donich in this 12 point spread in Dallas. Jason, what are you doing with this game? I am taking the maps. Um, I think there's going to be a ton of people on the Lakers spread just because it's, you know, 11, 12 points, depending on where you look. And I know the Lakers have been playing relatively close games, I guess you could say. Uh, if you want to count blowing 20 point leads, a close game. Um, but the maps have just been simply kind of, you know, putting teams away that are bad teams. Um, you know, Houston 110-91, you know, Utah 114-100. Um, you know, they, they've weirdly struggled against some teams that push the pace of late, which, you know, does concern me a little bit against the Lakers. But the fact that LeBron's not there tonight is it, – it's such a mass, massive deal. Um, over the last 10 games, you know, against point cards, they're third in defensive efficiency, like – we're going to basically have Russell Westbrook running the show and against one of the best point guard defenses. I also just don't know really how Austin Reeves, Stanley Johnson, Wayne Gabriel are going to kind of put up buckets against, you know, some relatively decent defenders and, you know, Dinwiddie Brunson, you know, Bullock, Finney Smith, like it's going to be tough uh, for the Lakers to get points tonight. I don't know if they're going to be able to fully play with their pace either. Um, Dinwiddie push back to the bench. So you're going to obviously stagger those minutes and have Dinwiddie going up against a Lakers second unit where Dinwiddie and, and whoever's on the floor are going to win that matchup, you know, nine times out of 10. So I just, for me, they have the advantage of basically just every aspect of the game. I think people are going to look and go, I'm a little bit scared of, you know, Lakers, you know, kind of keeping this one close. I, I just don't see it. I look at this lineup and I just don't see it whatsoever. I would argue, I mean, this uh, since we have, oh, we do have player props, we do have player props, I don't know what I was saying, took a second for me to wake up this morning, but um, I was going to say we could talk about this instead of player props, would you say the Lakers are closer to the Portland Trailblazers than the Mavericks without LeBron and Anthony Davis? Because I would. I, I legitimately think, at this point, Russell Westbrook's useless to have on your team. Yeah, I'm going to get tons of heat by people in the comments, whatever. He, he's not a good team for winning basketball. He's not a good player for winning basketball games. And the rest of that team is basically slightly better than the Portland Trailblazers' G League roster they have out there right now. It's, like this, it's slightly better, yes. Like, um, I got, yeah, I, I agree. Like, I'm not fully going to be like, man, the Lakers and Blazers are exactly the same no. team right now. Because like, at least I've heard of, of the Lakers lineup. Exactly. Um, but yes, they are really not far off. Like, and I think they're obviously dangerously close to just missing the playoffs entirely. Um, and I would not be surprised just because, you know, LeBron's hobbled up. I, it says day to day, but I, I don't know how healthy these are actually going to really be over the next, you know, 10 days. I, I mean, Drew, you have the over under. I'll let you talk to that. And then uh, I kind of want to touch on the team totals after you do that. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I, I would stay as far away as possible from the point total. I'm with Jay on the spread. I mean, anytime you're looking at a double-digit spread, it's pretty massive for the NBA. But the Lakers are going to be without LeBron. They're going to be without Anthony Davis, of course. They're going to be starting Stanley Johnson and Dwight Howard and Austin Reeves. And Westbrook is going to be the primary offensive weapon like it's just it's not looking good there in terms of the point totals hovering around 218 218 and a half I hate this because Lakers games tend to go over and you see a lot of like 125 118 types of point totals but the Mavs are I mean, short of when they played like the Charlotte Hornets, a team like that that can get really, really hot. And it sort of doesn't really matter what type of defense you play. If they're hitting shots, they're hitting shots. Dallas is going to hold this team under 100 points, I think, in my opinion. I don't see where they're going to get their offense from, honestly. Dallas has kind of struggled a little bit in their past five games in terms of defensive rating. I think they're bottom 
10 during that period and they've gone two and three in their past five. So they've struggled a little bit, but I look at that small sample size as more of a exception to the rule than something we should actually be concerned about. Dallas is pretty much fully healthy and LA is pretty much at this point, in my opinion, the the, the Spurs are going to pass them up. I think the Lakers are pretty much hopeless I would lean towards the under here just because the fact that I don't know how the Lakers are going to get to a hundred points. Legitimately. I don't know. I've tried to come up with different ideas in my head, like, Oh, Malik Monk goes for 25 or, you know, Austin Reeves gets hot or Westbrook looks like he did five years ago. I just don't, I don't see it. So I would lean towards the under here. Yeah. So I'm, I mean, obviously on the Lakers under at one Oh two and a half, I legitimately, if you can give me an alternate number, I will go as low as you will give me. I think the Lakers should be on like 80 point watch tonight. Hell, they may be on 75 point watch tonight. The way, the way you said it, Jason, was perfect. I just don't see how the Lakers score points. None of the the places where you think like, all right, these guys without LeBron and AD, maybe this is where they can score. Dallas usually shuts those places down. Uh, it's just they have no matchup. They're winning. They have no motivation. They have no LeBron saying they're telling them to actually play the game of basketball. Like, it, I'm not saying it's like guaranteed 100% they're not getting to 80 points, but it's like if you can find someplace offering you very low alternatives for their team total, I'm sure the odds will reflect a, a positive EV on that bet. That's what I'm saying. Because 102 is way too high. I would take this, like I said, like 90 at plus 200 any day of the week. Well, I consider this too. The last time these two teams played, um, March 1st, so almost a month ago, they did have LeBron. LeBron posted 26, 12, and 5, and they got to 104 points. Yeah. And, and it's just like the entire well. team doesn't work without LeBron. It's not just right. the offense. It's like right. they can't, they don't, they're not going to play at a fast pace. So how are they going to get to 102 if they yeah. got to 104 and that, like, it just doesn't make, it doesn't line up. Like there's no other logical explanation you can really have that, you know, rationalizes choosing the over there. But even in that, even in that first game, um, you know, it was, it was 107, 104, and that was an overtime game. Like, yeah. and that was with Westbrook, James and Davis, all 20 plus points. So, um, you know, Luca didn't even play that game either. Like these, the prior two matchups just have been in and out of, of guys, but like that's similar to tonight where we're just not seeing the Lakers guys really probably show up and put up points. Like I, I know, you know, we can point towards, Oh, they put up so-and-so on the Pelicans. That's great. The Pelicans are one of the worst defenses in the league. Like is Westbrook going to have his nights where he goes off and, you know, sure. Like, but this just isn't the spot for him to do it. Um, you just kind of look at all the, the teams that they've been playing lately. Um, you know, Washington, Cleveland's not the same without Jared Allen. Um, Philly clearly took that game very lightly. I don't even know what the hell they're doing down the stretch anyway, trying to basically avoid teams. It's, it, it's true because we're watching Philly do it. Um, and then you caught Toronto kind of on a bad night, you know, off a long road trip. So, like, I'm not buying into even these recent Lakers trends either. Yeah. Uh I'm with you. Let's go to let's go to player props. We got Austin Reeves, Dorian Finney Smith, Dwight Powell, Jalen Brunson, Luca, Reggie Bullock, and Russell Westbrook. Out of these fine selection of players, Drew, what's your favorite player prop? I'm gonna hate myself after saying this, but <laughs> Russell Westbrook over 33 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. The usage is going to be disgusting, guys. It's going to be absolutely disgusting. We're going to see a full-blown, like, Oklahoma City Thunder circa 2016 Russell Westbrook in terms of usage, I think, tonight. And this is, like, this is a bet that he's, like, kind of been hitting the past, you know, little while. Like, he didn't hit it last game, but he hit it the game before. 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 He's hit it four of the past five games and no LeBron now. Um, There's going to be a disgusting amount of usage. Obviously the Lakers are going to struggle. I think 
85, 90 points is probably where they end up this game. But I wouldn't be shocked if Westbrook ended up with 22, 10 and eight or something in that ballpark, just because they have literally nothing else to work with. Like they have, they have nothing else really like unless Malik Monk goes for 40 or like, I just don't see any other option. I also like every Brunson over and every Doncic over, to be honest. I like all of those. The Lakers have been terrible all season against opposing guards. So Doncic and Brunson should have an absolute heyday against this Lakers um, front uh, front court. Jason? Back court. Middle court. Uh, I'm, I'm going to just exercise a little caution. Um, as we head down the stretch here and games are getting blown out, like – player props are becoming even more volatile just because, you know, if we're expecting, you know, basically the Mavs to win by 12 plus is Dodge in, you know, midway through the fourth does even finish up that game, you know, same thing with a couple of these other guys. So that's, that's my concern with some of these, uh, which is why I'm not really loving player props. I think the one that I was immediately going to go to is the Russell Westbrook turnovers uh, because of all that usage, but minus 155, it's just an egregious number. Um, I do like Dorian Finney-Smith over five and a half rebounds. This is one that I've gone to a couple times um, on these videos and he's slowed down a little bit on the boards, but he's faced some good rebounding teams. This prop is hit in the prior two meetings. He's had 18 rebounds in the two meetings against the Lakers this year. This is also a Lakers team that gives up the most, sorry, um, fifth most rebounds to opposing power forwards this year. Um, so getting plus money, plus 120, I think is really good value there. Yeah, unfortunately, you can't do alternate lines for turnovers. Otherwise, I would make a same game parlay with Westbrook over four and a half or over five. All right. So we got our bets on the day. Mavericks minus 12, a little bit on the under 218 and a half, but might as well just bet the under 102 and a half for the Lakers. Uh, at this point, honestly, I'll X out the total under. Russell Westbrook over 33 and a half points, assists, rebounds. I agree with your take, Jason. I, I put up here Luca over 29 and a half points for Drew, but. I think that number's a little scary just because of the blowout. I do like the Brunson over 15 and a half. I'm never going to say no to a Brunson prop in my life. Over five and a half for Dorian Finney-Smith when it's on the boards at plus 120. Let's go to wrap it up. Do you guys remember when uh, the Lakers won that Disney World ring? That was fun. That was a fun time. What? Uh, what? 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 I, I, I legitimately did not watch a single minute of that. So, it was like an expedition. Oh. Expedition. <laughs> this is a car. All right, something, something bubble, something bubble. Yeah, what? God, what was that? Bubble wrap. They should, they should have a little Disney, like a little Mickey Mouse on each side of those championship rings, just to like rub it in. All right, thank you guys for watching. You can always click the subscribe button and the bell to get notified when these videos go up. If you like this one, drop a like. If you did not, a dislike. Comment down below your favorite bets, and we will see you for the next one very soon.